a new management takes over. Bulldozers turn bomb craters into runways. We're in business. Our first plane lands on the Admiralties. With the airstrip in our hands, we fought on to take all of Los Negros. It was now practical for the rest of the 1st Cavalry Division to jump to Manus. Next, units of the 1st Marine Division crossed from Gloucester to take the airstrip near Talasia, only 160 air miles from Rabaul. Another Marine unit springs on two of the St. Matthias Islands, north of Caviang in New Ireland. Look at the map now. Rabaul is outflanked, and the once mighty Jap 17th Army, completely surrounded, without hope of reinforcement or supply, now has only the jungle and a date with death. Brilliant successes create new opportunities, make possible new plans. We don't need to drive that wedge between Waywack and Madang at Hansa Bay now. We don't even need to invade Kavyang. The grabs of the St. Matthias Islands have tossed out the importance of that. With the New Britain, New Ireland, and Bougainville Japs already half choked, we can try something else, something bigger. The biggest step yet attempted in the Southwest Pacific, to bite off the whole main chunk of New Guinea. Here's the plan. A task force of three elements will hit New Guinea, like this. The first unit, the 163rd and 127th Infantry, will smash into ITAP to grab the Taji airstrip. The two others, the 24th and 41st Divisions, will punch Hollandia at Humboldt and Tanamara Bays. Main objectives, three airstrips. Cyclops, Centeni, and Hollandia. But the grand sweep calls for a large task force moving by sea. Suppose the Jap fleet and its carrier-based planes makes one of its rare appearances. Admiral Nimitz will handle that end with coordination of all naval strength in the Pacific. Let them come out. But large operations require thorough preparation. For months, the 5th Air Force has been paving the way with bombs on Alexis Island and Maydang. Paying courtesy calls on Waywack and ITAP, and always bearing gifts. <laughs> Dropping in on Hollandia with parafrag forget-me-nuts and in three successive days, catching almost 300 Nip sky buggies asleep on the ground. Smashing the convoys that try desperately to sneak through. Australian infantry pushing overland are already closing in on Madang. Waywak is next. Their pressure will keep the Japs engaged while we use the ocean as a military highway to strike their rear and cut off all chance of retreat. A coordinated amphibious operation is a tough job. It requires thorough preparation, thorough training, thorough understanding of the job at hand, teamwork, split-second timing, from the division. Each one of you is much better than the Jap. You're better physically, you're better mentally, you have better weapons, you're gonna have better support. So that you're gonna be able to lick him hands down when it comes to individual fighting. However, do not take him too lightly because he has that fanaticism which makes him think that his mission is to die for the emperor and 
He will do that, no matter how bad the situation is. So you want to watch him, watch him as you would a rattlesnake. If you do that, you should have a little trouble with him. The regiment. Let me repeat again what the general said. If you have to run any chances whatsoever to get a prisoner, then don't get him. <laughs> Just fix him up so he won't do any more harm. But if you can get them without running a risk, get them. Now, when we get them, maybe that they will have gone for a long time without water, perhaps without food. All right, give them a drink of water if you like. Give them something to eat if you like. But don't give them cigarettes. Don't give them gum. Don't give them candy, if you have any. Don't give them anything that could possibly be considered a luxury. They will not appreciate it. And don't forget that a few minutes before you took them prisoner, they were just looking for a chance to bump you off. Treat them according to the rules of war, no less and no more. The company. A company. You land in here. Move in the coconut grove in Oregon. Company perimeter. C company. You move from here to your Elsie Isle land in here. That leaves you then in a line roughly that way. Make your own perimeter. You'll be responsible for your own security. The squad. Watterson, you'll take your team, push through this little draw, come out to a good firing position and fire from here without further orders and keep the fire up. Tompkins, remember, you keep firing when the magazines are being changed. Time ticking away, and rumors fly thick and fast. When do we shove off? A few people knew the right answers, and plenty more would know it soon enough. Because training ends today, embarkation starts tomorrow. The convoy forms. Some men, some guns, some ships. The task force slips out in separate units, a few at a time. Many sailings of small fleets on a single job. Why? Because by breaking into separate units, the enemy may be fooled into thinking that these are no more than routine supply trips to Sador, Gloucester, or the Admiralties. It's all part of the grand strategy. Now it is the morning of April 21st. Rendezvous off the Admiralties. Invasion 24 hours away. Warships. Cruisers. Aircraft carriers. Destroyers. Minesweepers, a great fleet of floating protection, bearing tourists from 48 states. You may field strip your carbine, touch up your M1, or try to fill an inside straight. But just pass away the time of day. But in some part of this last day, every mind will find its way back home. Busy is right, pal. Busy landing, busy digging in, busy being hungry and making your ration last, thirsty and hoarding your water, busy trying not to get trigger happy, busy hitting foxholes when zeros come, busy trying to keep alive and keep shoving, hot, dirty, plenty scared some of the time, plenty mad the rest. You said it, soldier, you'll be busy. The Air Force will bomb holes in the jungle and strafe the Japs half crazy. The Navy will bust open the beaches and punch the shorelines. 
but the unsung infantry will land through the surf to sweat it out till victory or a field hospital or the grave. A vast fleet full of American citizens dropping in on ITAP and Hollandia. To land, to fight through and grab the airstrips is the itinerary of this first visit to Dutch New Guinea. I give you a mark. The main battery target range will be. When I give you a mark, the main battery target range will be. 12,800. 12,800. Bearing 255.4. 255.4. Turrets, match the port. Match the port. Turrets, load. Are you ready, plot? Main battery's ready to open. Aye, aye, sir. Main battery ready to open, Brad. You're on the line. Main battery loaded and ready, sir. Commence firing. It's up to them. Might be a shore full of gems, another Tarawa. Or if barrage and surprise worked, an easy grab and push. But from the Higgins boats, all new beaches look alike. Barrage and surprise did work. Humboldt Bay, 115 miles to the west. Same day, same time, same chances. Once again, landing unresisted begins to look as if the Japs expected us somewhere else. Reports of progress come back to the Commander-in-Chief. General, the first wave has landed on schedule and met no opposition. Swell. Couldn't be better. Thanks. Farther west at Tanamera, the first wave landed with only slight opposition. Now the LCIs and LSTs hurry in with the main body. Go 
been standing up. Some of them. We landed on the on, uh, white one, which is this beach right here. Right here. Well, third wave is fourth wave. Fourth wave. Reports come in faster now. No sign of the Jap Navy. All landings progressing well. All right, looks like it's in the bag. Back at ITAP, the village edges the sea. You wait on the beach while patrols sift in ahead to spring the trap, if there is one. 